Real-time strategy is a very, very serious business, and Relic Entertainment takes its RTS titles very, very seriously. Next on the agenda are Dawn of War 2 and Company of Heroes, Tales of Valor, and we've been invited to come and try out both of them at the company's offices, which are housed in this very, very serious-looking building behind me here in Vancouver, Canada. But don't worry, because once you get inside, you'll realise that they're all really very silly people. We don't know what they put in the water over here, but in North America, people take silliness very seriously. And it doesn't get much sillier than Halloween. So, when we roll up at Relic's offices on October the 31st, we can't help but feel slightly underdressed. Relic Entertainment has been around since 1997, a key part of the thriving Canadian development community. Vancouver, a glorious coastal city in British Columbia, is home to HQs for big league publishers like EA, FIFA and Need for Speed are made here, veteran studios like prototype developer Radical Entertainment, and also some lesser known whippersnappers worth keeping an eye on, like Blue Castle Games, who Eurogamer recently revealed is hard at work on the sequel to Capcom's zombie romp Dead Rising. Relic is, of course, all about real-time strategy. And we're in town to see the latest instalments of two of its three biggest franchises, while doing our best to trick them into telling us something about the other one. Four years after the original Warhammer 40k fest impressed us, Dawn of War 2 is bulking up for release next February. And this time the snarling orcs and space marines are powered by the engine that drove Company of Heroes to its stunning 10 out of 10 victory over our reviewing forces. Looking at the games is one thing, but if you really want to discover the secret to Relic success, you should probably start at the bar. We're kind of legendary for our drinking antics and just being a little over the top. I mean, you know, we have people like knock each other out or, or smash stuff or, or just all kinds of crazy. Get kicked out of our own Christmas party by the bouncers. Our CVs are in the post, as well as some leaflets from these guys. Alcoholism is a strong word, but, but we're a rowdy studio but rowdy in a, in a, in a constructive way, and, and we like to have fun and just be crazy, you know? Like, um, people can be themselves, and, and you can be eccentric at Relic as long as, you, as you're on top of your shit. Review scores would certainly suggest the studio is on top of its shit. And as for eccentric, well, what do you reckon? But while this is a studio that likes getting drunk, it's not on former glories. The times they are are changing and Relic is determined to drive forwards. PC has been in a bit of a rut. We've done it to ourselves. We've made it way too freaking complicated. And we haven't kept up with other genres. RTS is falling behind the other genres and we either, we either need to compete or people are going to continue to vote with their dollars by going to other genres. Naturally, for Dawn of War 2, the team thinks it has the answers. Better rewards, no more starting over and trying to ramp up the attachment you feel to your units and the action down on the ground. For the uninitiated, Dawn of War is set in the distinctive and unashamedly geeky sci-fi of Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 universe. The tabletop game first appeared in 1987 and is showing no signs of shaving off its beard yet, with a fifth edition launched earlier this year. It's pretty much perfect video game fodder. As soon as you get in the game, you see how Relic's new philosophy changes the experience. For starters, rewards come thick and fast, and this is a cue taken from MMOs. Massive. You get rewarded every 10 minutes, you know? Reward, bam, good job. Somebody's either telling you, awesome job, or they're giving you something. So we integrated that into our game. And Relic wants you to care about these Marines, and so persistence is crucial. Persistence? It's like bacon, man. It makes everything better. You know, like, you know, you add bacon to a dish, it's almost always better. We completely agree. Persistence and progression are like bacon, man. And so we just thought, we need to integrate those into RTS, or RTS is going to continue to fall behind. Single player missions are also short, punchy, and dramatic. Resource building has been ditched in favor of creating a blood spewing orgy of strategic violence. It's about accessibility. But if you crave these staples of the genre, multiplayer is for you. Traditionally, Wisdom was like, single player needs to prepare you for multiplayer. But in reality, it never does. You can get really awesome at single player. The second you step into multiplayer, you just get destroyed. It's an entirely different experience. Multiplayer is for the more traditional. You need resource gathering. You need base building as a pacing mechanic. You can check out our full hands-on impressions by hitting the red button.
Now, having heard so much about this drunken, crazy, eccentric bunch, we thought we'd have a poke around the curious innards of the studio. This is the Dawn of War II team area. This is where we've been slaving away for the last uh, two and a half years. Let's see what uh, Stuart's working on here. This is sort of a reuse of last year. It was an Enlightenment period automaton with the face makeup and everything, but I've taken that off. These are the miniatures from Games Workshop. They send us all the new stuff they get, and uh, you know we use it for reference for everything we're making. One guy's so hardcore, he, he cast his own uh, Imperial Guard race, like made it himself. So this is uh, Alan Bjorkstein. He's our technical artist and uh, tabletop creator extraordinaire. It's just to, to really create something from scratch um, within the Warhammer universe. Um, and just, you know, for my personal sort of satisfaction, um, as well as just to, I don't know, to have something physical you can touch, right? Nathan's the, the uh, lead animator on Donald Ward. Did you make this yourself? Yeah. How long did it take you? Uh, about a couple of weeks, some pretty late nights. I take it you're a fan of Bioshock, then? I freaking love that game. <laughs> <laughs> but Dawn of War 2 is going to be better than Bioshock. Though. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. This is um, Ian Cummings and Jason Brackman. They're our, uh, two of our effects artists. The whole thing about the, the orc race is that um, everything that they use barely works. It's almost falling apart. It's almost as dangerous for them as it is for the enemy. So we're trying to get that with the, uh, the pieces falling out. It's burning all around them. Just trying to emulate this. The Tyranid race make their Dawn of War debut in the sequel, and for the first time ever, the Hive Mind has a voice. The enemy has 10 points remaining. The Hive Tyrant is under attack. The Lictor is under attack. Dawn of War 2 is due out on PC next February. Anyway, let's leave Warhammer behind and travel back roughly 38,000 years, give or take, to a more familiar setting. Company of Heroes was a landmark RTS when it hit in 2006. It scored maximum marks from us, our review noting it's just about as good as a strategy game gets. Tales of Valor is the second standalone expansion, following the 8 out of 10 scoring opposing fronts. This one does what it says on the tin. We're telling really intimate stories about World War II, stories that we care a lot about, stories that are um, faithful within the context of the video game environment to the actual inspirational stories of real people. Um, it's something that we, we have a lot of respect for. Relic is saying nothing about multiplayer today, but Tales of Valor does feature three mini campaigns in single player, and the focus is, like Dawn of War 2, on action, with base building and resource management ordered to the sidelines. Spot the trend? When we did Dawn of War, uh, which I was part of, it was a really amazing experience to say, hey, you know what? Uh, Warcraft and Starcraft are amazing titles, uh, but chopping wood, you know, digging for gold, these things don't belong in a battlefield. One of the major additions to gameplay is direct control. Switch to this and you can direct precisely where certain units are shooting. The idea behind this is something that's been, um, it's been looked at in a bunch of other games. Uh, games where they look to take the army combat of a of a RTS and mix it with the direct control of first-person shooters, you know, point, click, boom sort of idea. And that's really what it's all about. It's about taking the, the, the visceral control and putting it right in the player's hands where it belongs. We got to try out the Tiger Ace mission in control of the mighty German tank. And can report that direct control is very satisfying indeed when you're trundling around blowing everything to smithereens. You can read our more detailed impressions by clicking the red button. Company of Heroes Tales of Valor will be rolling out next spring. OK, so that's two out of Relic's big three franchises. So what about Homeworld? After all, THQ, which owns Relic, snagged the rights to the space-based RTS last year. So we damn well know that Homeworld 3 is being worked on somewhere in this building. Come on, how's it looking? Well, I think we're, we're going into final right now. Oh, I've said too much. but. Uh... You know, Homeworld's always been dear to our heart. It's what put us on the map. It was our first product. I think it'll always have a special place in our hearts. So, uh, a special place in the room in the studio right now. It's always that chance. Uh, as it always has, behind closed doors, oh. blacked off. Not, no. Um, Homeworld 3, obviously, uh, I'm not at liberty to say anything about. So, good try. Sod it. We're going all the way to the top. 
How many teams have you got uh, operating in the building? <laughs> Three to four. Depends how you count. But they use the new math or the old math. <laughs> Would you like to explain the difference between the new math and the old math? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> just, just point us in the direction of the Homeworld 3 room, we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. So. This doesn't look like the development room for Homeworld 3. <laughs> right, that's it. We're desperate now. And how much would it cost me for you to tell me where Homeworld 3 is going on? I've got 50 English pounds. Which well, actually, the, the exchange rates. Um, the market right now, that's, that's, a, that's a compelling so, offer. That's right. kind of like 30 Canadian dollars. Yeah, I'm going to have to you know, consider that seriously. Maybe. Uh, I, I can give you, or I'll tell you what, I'll give you 15 pounds and all my Tesco club card points. That is pretty lucrative, especially in Canada, considering we don't have Tesco, so... But if you're ever in Britain, you, know, you can get half price carrots and vouchers for schools and all sorts of things. Okay, well that's a... Uh, uh, you know, I think I might have to sell us out. Watch this space. Anyway, as we were about to leave, the studio's fancy dress festivities were reaching a climax, as the best costumes of the day were chosen. And if you think Messrs Noseworthy and Ebert were the professional ones here today, you should have seen them later on in the evening. Sadly, they also forced us to join in. Happy Halloween, you're a gamer! Uh, they're ringing out. That's awesome. I was like, why, is, why am I feeling such a breeze? <laughs>